we can now link from the days of the late 1700s before slavery ended to 2009, we can link those two together with no gaps in the story. Yeah, completely seamless. And what we show is that abortion today is a continuation of a strategy that began before slavery ended with the anticipation that slavery was going to end and what was going to happen with black people once they, slavery was over. The strategies that they came up with right then um, just continued on, and when one of them would fail, they'd come up with another one, and when it would fail, they'd come up with another one until they got to the one that worked, which was abortion. And the, the aha moment for me, when you, we lay this thing out on a timeline and look and say, okay, which, which things happened at the same time? Because I'm not a big believer in coincidence. When I see things lining up, mm -hmm. I'm really suspicious. Mm -hmm. And what you look at, and, and we've all heard these people say, well, like Planned Parenthood was opposed to abortion, Margaret Sanger was opposed to abortion, Alan Guttmacher was opposed to abortion, and they were, up until a point. And some things started lining up. When we, we started looking at these things that had, had been tried and, and failed, we, we got to the point of when they were doing forced sterilizations, and I don't think many people know that they set up these eugenics boards and that 31 states in America had eugenics boards that were doing forced sterilizations, mm -hmm. 31 states. Mm -hmm. And the last one didn't end until the 1980s. Right. Oregon had the last eugenics board, and it didn't disband until 1983. But when in the 60s, when they were really hot and heavy on the forced sterilization deal, they began to get concerned that the Supreme Court was going to rule that they were unconstitutional, which lower courts had already started doing. And so they started seeing that sterilization was not going to be the solution to getting rid of all the blacks like they had planned uh, since the 1800s. And the biggest book on that was written in the, in the 1940s, by the way. Um, so sterilization was starting to go away. About that same time, blacks in America were starting to demand their civil rights. We're saying that we're talking about the mid-60s. And this is where the term burn, baby, burn came from. The, the radical blacks, if you want to call them that, stood up and said, we'll burn this country to the ground if we don't get our, mm -hmm. the rights that every other American has had. So we had things like Watts and, right. and, and uh, Chicago and, and Cleveland and all. You had all these towns around the country just burning, literally. Cleveland almost burned to the ground, or parts of it did. Um, well, that was happening. At the same time, when we started putting this timeline together, what we saw was that it was at this time when they were losing um, sterilization and when they were losing, the, the blacks were starting to riot and say, we're demanding our rights. First time, that's when these people all changed their minds and, our, and the federal government changed its mind and started demanding the legalization of abortion. And I don't think that those things were, were coincidence, that all three of these things happened at exactly the same time on the timeline. I remember, Mark, when you showed me that chapter in that room, and uh, the organizer, it's, it's, it's wonderful watching people do research uh, because I loved it because you could back up everything. You showed me books and things I had never, I'm going like, oh, my goodness, these people actually wrote this? Whoa! Right. Mm -hmm. You know, there, there are some things. You're a Mark man, now, I'm telling you, from this project. And uh, because I looked at that timeline, and I remember a number of us walked around the room, and we watched it, and there were little things we noticed. Wow, well, you know, when slavery was over, ooh, look what they tried to do here. Oh, my goodness. Well, look, well, finally we got, oh, look at Jim Crow law. Whoa, we thought that. Look what happened there. Every time blacks was getting ready to do something, the ante went up. Right. Especially coming from the population controllers. Well, the population and boy, control was about black population control. It, right? it, exactly. And I tell you, when it, when it got to that last one, and right when blacks are now getting past Jim Crow and we're going to move on, and boy, oh boy, Mark, well, the, the, there, there, there are things that blacks have always suspected. Yeah. And we've connected the dots. Brother. And I'll tell you what, I've learned things. Uh, I've been at this 30 years, and I've been working full-time in the pro-life movement for 22. I've learned things in the last two, three years since we've been doing this project that I never heard of, I never dreamed of. I never knew was happening. I never, I, I just never connected all the dots. Right. And, you know, first, one of the most astonishing things that I learned in this research, if I said to you guys, who was the first pro-life group? Well, you might say, well, National Right to Life mm -hmm. or American Life League or whoever, and you go back and or is the U.S. Conference of Catholic Bishops or whatever. It's stunning to learn that the first pro-life groups in this country were the Black Panthers, the Nation of Islam, right. and all of these, uh, what are now, or what at the time were considered radical 
black civil rights groups, they were the per first pro-life groups in the country because they had seen that it was black genocide. Right. And we have found all of these quotes and all of these documents that um, confirmed that these guys, and we've even talked to some of them from, from that era, um, they saw what was going on. Right. The problem was that you had sellouts like Jesse Jackson. I mean, Jesse Jackson, and we've got a ton of his quotes in here, some of them that I'd heard before, some of them that we found I'd never heard. Who started out being pro-life? Jesse, in his earlier days, was one of the first person who raised that question. Right, and he was one. You know, I thought when I saw that thing, all these things lining up, I think, well, this is just some fat white guy in Denton, Texas. What do I know? Jesse Jackson, <laughs> uh, when we started studying this, said exactly the same thing. He said, it's very strange mm -hmm. that at the minute we said we're going to demand our constitutional rights, they suddenly start talking about abortion. They had always said, no, we don't want abortion, it's wrong, it's murder, we're not going to do it. But the second that sterilization is being taken away from them, and we're saying we want our rights, all of a sudden, we, the most important civil rights issue in America is a woman's right to choose. Right. And Jesse Jackson was saying these things, but Jesse Jackson wanted to be president, and the Democratic Party, and we've got all these quotes, and the stuff that we um, found just has blown me away. You know, those, we, those earlier c civil rights guys, even for Black Panthers, a lot of groups was really targeted because they were so radical. But the truth of it is they were radical because they knew it was a radical moment. Right. Uh, they always informed, educated, and they activated. That was the key things. And, 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 and I think the project that you've just completed and helped out with here, um, and uh, we got some black folks in this thing. Right. And I am in, in this one project, does what the Black Panther and other organizations were trying to do in the first place, inform, educate. Right. And boy, the activation comes after this one. Well, you know, we, uh, what we've done, just so people know, is we've, we've produced a documentary. It's called Ma'afa 21. Ma'afa is the Swahili word that's used to describe the time of slavery. And 21 relates to the 21st century. What it's we're like the black genocide. It, 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 it is. Swahili means something so horrible, way yeah. just devastating. Right. Like a black holocaust. And Well, that's exactly what they call it, the black holocaust. Mm -hmm. It's called ma'afa in Swahili. So we took that word, put 21 with it for the 21st century. Because if anybody thinks that slavery ended uh, in, in 1865, they're nuts. It changed forms. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, people weren't kept on the plantations, maybe right. they could leave if they wanted to. But when you start looking at some of the things that we found, Francis Galton, who created eugenics, at the same time, blacks were being freed. This is another one of these things that, that locked up, you know. Francis Galton, the father of eugenics, creates eugenics at the same time blacks are being freed. Francis Galton, 